Well, hello everyone. Happy Friday. Thank you for joining us here for another NeuroTools webinar. Uh, today I have the pleasure of welcoming Dr. Sinu Paul as he speaks about the IEDB analysis resource, a package of tools for immune epitope prediction and analysis. Uh, Dr. Sinu Paul is a bioinformatics scientist at the Immune Epitope Database and Analysis Resource Project which is located at the La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology in San Diego, California. His work mainly focuses on development of computational algorithms and tools using machine learning techniques and statistical applications for application in immunology, such as the immune epitope prediction and analysis of epitope-related data. Uh, well, once again, Dr. Paul, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, without further ado, I'd like to hand the microphone over to you and we can get started. All right, thank you. Thanks, Devon, for the introduction. And good morning and welcome, everyone. So today I will be talking about um, IDB analysis resource. It's, as Devon mentioned, it's a set of tools for immune epitope prediction and analysis. So last week, last Friday, um, my colleague uh, Ranti gave a presentation on a webinar on IDB, the database part. So you can consider this as a continuation to that one. And I'm afraid I think I have too many stuff or too many slides to go through in less time. So maybe I may have to rush through some of them. So. Uh, I just want to mention this before I go further. So we have an annual workshop coming in October uh, here at La Jolla, California. So if you have more questions and if you want to get to know more and if you want to meet uh, the developers behind these tools, please come. Um, so for more details, visit workshop.idb.org or email us at workshop at idb.org. So the number of seats are limited. So if you are interested, please uh, get in touch with us uh, as soon as possible. And also we have um, a resource, help resource center here, IDB Solution Center. So there are a lot of other resources like um, presentations, videos, tutorials, and question answers. So you can visit there to get more details. And also you can email us at help at idb.org. So all the tools, as a contact page, which basically uh, gives the link to this IDB Solution Center and email address. So that's it. And so let's uh, start. So what is an epitope? Let's start from there. So epitope is basically part um, we can call in case of protein uh, antigens and peptide uh, or part of an antigen that's being recognized by the immune system. Uh, it can be the MSC molecules or T cell receptors in case of T cells or antibodies in case of B cells and which in turn leads to an immune response. So this is an example uh, in case of uh, class one antigen processing pathway where the MSC class one molecule, you can see it's bound to a peptide, which is the epitope. And this in turn presents this peptide, the MSC class one molecule presents the peptide or epitope to the T cell receptor of a CD8 plus T cell or cytotoxic T cells. And once this receptor recognizes this complex, this peptide MSC molecule complex, it can generate an immune response. Similarly, in case of MSC class two <coughs> pathway, um, the MSC class two molecule presents uh, the epitope to a T cell receptor of CD4 plus T cell uh, um, <coughs> T cell. So these epitopes, uh, these peptide fragments can be predicted using computational algorithms. So we have some tools for predicting these uh, epitopes and, and uh, analyzing epitope related data. So this is the homepage for IDB database, immune epitope database, or ID, uh, and it's available at idb.org. So this is a free database with immune epitope and related information. So the, all this data come from experimental um, uh, <coughs> experiments, like real uh, data, not predicted data, but the real data. Uh, and you can query this database for um, finding epitopes from different pathogens, antigens, and information about different assays and all those epitope related information. And if you look at the right side, you can see some uh, see the epitope analysis source, which lists a set of tools uh, for um, predicting these epitopes and analyzing epitope data. So let's go to 
the analysis resource. So this is available at um, tools.idb.org. And as I mentioned, it's a collection of tools for immune epitope prediction and analysis. Uh, analysis. So these are basically, these prediction tools are basically machine learning algorithms. So we, what we do is we get, collect data from different sources and main, the main source of the data is basically IDB itself, the database itself. Uh, so they are the experimentally verified data. We collect this data, we develop algorithms, we train the algorithms using these data, and that's how we develop these tools. So in, in a way, uh, <clears throat> I should warn you, or I should mention this, that the performance of the tools uh, is kind of directly proportional to the availability of the amount and the quality and the quantity of the data. So if, you have, if we have a lot of data for a particular allele, uh, we can create more, um, like higher, better performing algorithms uh, for those alleles uh, like that. So these are the different tools and uh, resources available here. So the first one is tools for predicting T cell epitopes, then the B cell epitopes, and some epitope analysis tools. And we have different versions of the tools, for example, web or online tools. And the same tools are available as standalone or offline. And also there's API or RESTful interface. So I will go through each of them uh, in the coming slides. And I, uh, for today's talk, my intention is to give you an overall, uh, a quick walkthrough over all these tools um, and describe a little bit detail about uh, the T cell prediction tools or the MHC binding affinity uh, prediction tools. So I'll get to that uh, soon. So the tools available at this resource are mainly classified into three types. The first one is T-cell epitope prediction tools, which is a set of tools for predicting the MSC class one and class two binding predictions, also peptide processing predictions and immunogenicity. And the second set of tools uh, are for predicting B-cell epitopes and B-cell responses. And the third set is for analysis tools, like analyzing the epitope related data that you may have or you can collect from ID. So let's start with the T cell tools. So this is available at tools.idb.org slash main slash T cell. And there are four sets of tools. The first one is uh, predicting epitopes, T cell epitopes using uh, based on MSC binding affinity. So the, these tools predict the binding affinity uh, of, of MSC molecules with the epitopes. And the second set of tools actually predicts the processing. So an antigen as it enters the body or enters inside the cell, it's broken down into smaller peptides. So this basically predicts how antigen is processed and how, what kind of peptides are generated from those antigens. So we will go into details in the coming slides. And the third set deals with the immunogenicity prediction. So the first set basically predicts the affinity of the peptides with the MSC molecule. And this set basically, this set of tools predicts um, how much immune response these peptides can generate. So the difference is um, the training data. The first set of tools is basically trained on um, the binding affinity measurements uh, from, of uh, peptides with MS, different MSC molecules, whereas this is trained on the immune response data that's coming from the T cell immune response. And the last set of tool, uh, that's one tool, that's basically for predicting the structure of T cell or B cell receptors. So this is applicable for both T cell and B cell. So this can predict the structure of the T cell or B cell receptors. So let's uh, take a more closer look at the first set of tools, the prediction tools for MSC binding prediction. So this, uh, so, um, this is, uh, MSC class one molecule, and this is an example of class two molecules. So this is the structure. So you can see the peptide here, and this is the epitope. So what these tools does is predicts the strength of binding affinity between this peptide and this molecule. So we have three types here. The first one um, is a tool for predicting the binding affinity of the MSC class one molecule uh, uh, with uh, peptides. The second one, the same for class two molecules. And the third one is called TEPI tool. It's a new tool. It's basically, this is predicting the same as the other, the previous two tools, but it has a more user-friendly interface. 
uh, with a wizard kind of um, tool with uh, six different steps. So this is the home page for the by MSC class one binding affinity predictions. Um, this is available at tools.idb.org slash MSC one. So um, before I go much further detail into this tool, I just want to show you the basic layout of the tool. So for all the tools, this is the kind of uh, um, basic layout. So at the top, you can see different tabs. Uh, the first tab, of course, is the home page uh, where you can um, submit your input parameters, sequences, or other information. And the second page, uh, second tab is for help or tutorial, which details the um, provides instructions on how to submit the data, what kind of format you should be using, uh, what basic thresholds you should be using, and the recommendations, and how to interpret the results, and all those details. And the third tab shows an example, so it provides you an example data which you can submit. Um, uh, once you submit it here, it will be taken to the home page, and you can get a feeling, and you can um, uh, you can test uh, the tool. Basically. And the next tab uh, shows all the references, all the literature um, related to the methods and the tool um, <clears throat> that you're using. And the fourth one is for downloading. So for some of the tools, so uh, we are providing standalone or offline tools and some other data. For example, here you can see we are providing a train binding data uh, related to these tools. So if you want, you can download uh, the tool and the data here. So I will get into more details about this later. And the last tab is for contact. I showed you this before. So um, there's an IDB solution center uh, where you can get more resources and you can email us at help at idb.org if you have any question. So now let's come back to the MSC class one tool. So this is, as I said, this is the home page for the MSC class one binding predictions. So before I proceed with this tool, I <coughs> want to stress that if you have a, um, an antigen or a protein or a pathogen for which you want to identify epitopes, the first stop should be the database, the IDB database. So over there, you can find already identified epitopes, already recognized epitopes in uh, many pathogens or many antigens. So first you should query that database and you can see what epitopes are already known about your antigen or pathogen of interest. And if you still want to um, identify more epitopes or do want to study more, then you can um, come here and do the prediction. So, and one misconception, misconception a lot of people have is that these tools predict, um, you know, the right epitopes, but that's not true. This tool actually predicts the candidates. It, um, these tools are based on uh, the data and they are like just a machine learning algorithm. So it can have false positives. So it's, it, even though it gives very high good performance, it can still have false positives. So what the basic, the most important purpose of these tools is to reduce or narrow down a huge set of peptides to a small set that can be handled. So it, this tool basically predicts the top and peptide candidates for experimental verification. So this is not a, an alternate for experimental verification. This is just for narrowing down or selecting the top peptides from a large set of peptides or large set of antigens. So once you select these epitope candidates, then uh, those peptides need to be experimentally verified to confirm they are real epitopes. Okay, so now let's see how you can use this tool. So the first field is for providing the sequences, your sequence of interest, and you can provide it as a pasta format or plain format. You can also upload the sequence as a sequence file. And the next important step is to select the method. So we provide different methods based on different architectures. So for example, uh, there's this neural network based method called NetMSC PAN. This is a very high performing method and there's matrix based method called um, stabilized matrix uh, method and there are other methods. So, you know, but, <clears throat> and there's a consensus method <clears throat> which ultimately is a combination of three other methods. So what we recommend is to just use the default IDB recommended method. So this is a, um, this is our recommendation basically. For, so for each allele that you choose, we recommend which could be the best possible method for that particular allele. So just use uh, IDB recommended. That's our 
uh, recommendation. And in the next step for cloud, uh, MSC1, we have a set of species that for which you can do the predictions. So for example, human, macaque, mouse, pig rat, there are like 78 species for which you can do the prediction. So choose your species. And in the next step, you can choose the alleles. So there are different options for choosing alleles. So for example, there's a set of 27 reference alleles. If you want to get a global coverage, you can use that one or you can pick uh, the alleles of your choice from this drop down menu. So once you finalize your, uh, once you select the alley, you also need to pick the length. So for class one, you can do the prediction for lengths from eight to 14. So you pick your lengths. And once you have lengths uh, chosen your alleles and lengths, um, provide your email address, it's optional. But if you have long, large set of peptides and alleles, it's always better to provide the email address because it may take long time to finish uh, running these predictions. So once, if you have, uh, if you provide your email address, you will get an email once the predictions are done uh, with uh, all the prediction results. So now you have submitted your sequence data, uh, you have chosen your alleles and lengths and submitted the data and what happens. So how the tool works. So basically at first, the tool breaks down the sequences into all possible peptides of chosen length. So for example, if you chose nine mers and 10 mers, then the sequences are broken down first to all possible, possible nine mers and 10, 10 mers. And then it predicts the binding affinity for each of those peptides uh, based on the method that we cho that, that's chosen. So for example, if you chose IDB recommended, then for some alleles, it, the best allele or the available method may be NetMSC PAN. For some others, it could be a consensus. So the tool will pick the method and it will predict the binding affinity based on that method. And it assigns a percentile rank depending on the individual predicted affinity. So <laughs> this percentile rank can be used as a scale for um, picking the top peptides. So one thing you have to remember is that the lower numerical percentile rank value means better binders. So the higher the value, that means they're poor binders. The lower value means they are better binders. So once you submit, this is the results that is displayed on the web page. Uh, at the top, you can see the input sequences that you submitted. And the, at the bottom, you can see the prediction results. So this, uh, the first column shows the alleles that um, I chose. And the second one is the sequence number. So I had only one sequence. It shows the sequence number as one. The third column shows the start position of the peptide within the sequence. And the next column is the end position of the peptide within the sequence. And uh, this is the length of the peptide. So I chose nine mers and 10 mers. So uh, you can see only nine and 10. And this is the peptide and that's um, that was predicted for. And this is the method used. So for this allele, the tool determined that the best method is consensus, which in turn is a combination of NN and SMO method. And this is the predicted percentile rank. So this is by default sorted based on the percentile rank. So you can see the top, the best uh, binders at top. So as I mentioned, lower numerical percentile rank value means good binders. And you can also download, so sometimes you may have large um, that, uh, sequence, no, more sequence. So you can download these results as CSV file and you can do all the further screening and filtering and sorting uh, in, in any spreadsheet. So now you have got the results. So now you may have this question. So I have all these predictions of how I, I can pick the top binders. So if you are not sure how many peptides you should be choosing or what the show, so what we recommend is for class one, you can choose uh, percentile rank of one as a um, uh, threshold. So pick all the peptides with percentile rank value less than or equal to one. So some of the tools here also uh, gives you an IC50 value. So IC50 is a scale of the binding affinity, the strength of binding affinity. So the lower the numerical value, the better the bi um, binding affinity, high affinity. So as a convention, it's said that um, peptides or the binding affinity uh, IC50 values less than 50 nanomolar are considered to be very high affinity and between 50 and 500 is kind of intermediate and between 500 and 5000 low affinity. So you can also use that as a scale for selecting peptides. And sometimes, you know, the top peptides, all of the top peptides predicted may come from only one sequence or one allele. So in that case, if you want to 
have a combination of all the alleles and all the lengths, then you can choose like the top per, one percentage of peptides for each allele length combination. So ultimately, uh, the percentile rank, the predicted percentile rank, uh, serves as a scale for selecting top peptides. So you can use that as a scale and pick the top peptides as many number as you want. So that's about the class one binding affinity prediction tool. So it was a quick walkthrough. So same as that one, we have the class two binding affinity prediction tool. So the link is tools.idb.org msc2. So the the previous one was MSC1, but this is MSC2. The major difference between that one and this one is um, for that one, you could predict for lengths ranging from 8 to 14, but in case of class 2, the length is fixed at 15. It's not that MSC class 2 molecules can bind only with 15. No, it's not like that, but uh, it can bind with peptides uh, like lengths ranging from 13 to 23 or 25. But this tool, for the time being, it's, uh, the length is fixed at 15. So similar to the class one, you can provide the sequences, pick the alleles, and here we have only two species, human and mouse, uh, whereas in the case of class one, you saw that we have like seven to eight species, but here we have prediction algorithms only for two alleles, mainly because we don't have data for other species. <laughs> and uh, everything else is mostly same, and here, um, compared to class one, the prediction performance of class two tools is not as great as class one. The class one is excellent and this is not bad, but it's not as great as class one. So we, um, what we recommend is keep a higher threshold for class two tools. So for example, here we recommend a personnel rank threshold of 10 or less. So pick all the peptides with personnel rank less than uh, or equal to 10. Or on the other hand, the MSC binding affinity over there, it was 500, what we recommend here is 1000. So again, coming down to uh, selecting top peptides, you can use the percentile rank as a scale and select as many peptides as you want based on that scale. So that's, uh, those were the legacy tools that we had, um, um, that we have and uh, now I want to talk, take you to Tepi tool. This is a new interface for uh, MSC1 and MSC2 binding predictions. So this is, uh, the predictions are all same. The methods are available in, um, in here are same as the other ones, but this one has a better uh, user interface and it also provides all the basic, uh, all the uh, threshold values as default. So users, uh, do not have to get confused, you know, if you are not sure what I should be choosing, the default um, better method that we think are best are provided as default. So, and it's uh, designed as a wizard, uh, which takes you through six different steps for selecting, submitting the data. In the first step, you provide the sequence, and in the next one, you can choose the species and also the allele class, whether class one you want to do class one or class two binding predictions and the species. And one, uh, the selections that you already done or the data that you submitted are displayed at the right side. And once you did um, select the species and uh, allele class, the, in the third step, you can select the alleles. So here I'm uh, showing an example for class one. There are different options for selecting the alleles. You can select um, the list of frequently occurring alleles. And that's um, alleles that are more um, uh, seen in more than one percent of the population and select from, for example select the most frequent 27 most frequent and b alleles for getting a global coverage or select representative alleles from different hla supertypes so there are different options you can choose whichever you want and the third step is um, selecting alleles so yeah uh, this was for class one and here you can see this is for class two so for class two you have some more options so for example there's a seven allele method that we identified recently these seven alleles um and it's uh, it what it does is it predicts uh, the binding affinity for these seven alleles and uh, uh, calculates the median of the predicted personnel ranks and use that as a scale so this is basically the seven allele method is basically to pick the top immunogenic peptides um, as an allele independent way. So uh, anyway, uh, so there are different options for selecting the alleles. Um, and in the next step, you can choose the peptides, what kind of peptides you want. You want um, 
now what uh, the lengths and you can see how many peptides are included and you can also choose default settings for low number of peptides or moderate number of peptides or high number of peptides like that and you, there's option for removing the duplicate peptides or you want to keep uh, the duplicate peptides and also there's an option for conservancy analysis so for example if you want to pick only the peptides that are conserved in more than 30 or 50 percentage of uh, the sequences and in the fifth um, step, you can choose the method that you already saw. Uh, and also there's an option for selecting peptides based on um, different criteria for selecting the peptides. So for example, uh, based on percentile rank or based on the predicted IC50, or just select the top 10 percentage of the peptides or like that, or select and just give me like top 10 peptide, predicted peptides or like that. So, And also here you can provide the cut cutoff percentile rank so for class one I as I mentioned it's one so we provide that as the default uh, percentile threshold and of course you can uh, adjust that if you decide to and in the last step you can review all your selections and the submitted data and you can provide as optionally you can provide a job name and email and as I mentioned if you provide the email you will get an email at the end with all the results uh, once the prediction is done you don't have to wait um, at the browser so these are the results at the top you can see the top picked peptides or the prediction results based on your selected parameters so it's a concise table so from this prediction there are three peptides from these three alleles based on the thresholds that we provided and you can download this as a csv file and you can also download the complete prediction results for all the peptides for all the alleles here and the conservancy of peptides so we did a conservancy analysis for, so you can get that also like uh, all um, which peptides are conserved in what percentage of peptides and this is the citation information like uh, the references of the methods involved here and at the bottom you can see the input parameters that you submitted and this is the email if you provide the email uh, you will get uh, email ID you will get an email like this so you have all the concise results here and you can download all the concise complete and conservancy results as CSV files from here uh, from these links so uh, Till now we saw the MSC1 binding, uh, MSC1 and MSC2 binding affinity prediction tools, um, the online or web version. So as I mentioned before briefly, that we also have other versions available other than the online or web versions. So the first one is standalone or offline. Um, so if you go to this tab, um, so for uh, all the tools, there's a tab called download where you can download the tool or on the main tool page also there's a uh, download tab from where you can download the tools so these standalone tools or offline tools can be downloaded and run on your machine but uh, it needs linux so um, it can run only on for the time being it can run only on the linux um, uh, machines and the advantages of using uh, these standalone versions the first of all you don't need internet you can uh, run it on your machine uh, you don't have to connect to the internet and implement tools on your own machines you don't have to transmit the data over internet to our servers so it just runs on your own machines and this is extremely very useful in case of large data sets so you know if you have too much data you're submitting on the online tools it can take a long time uh, sometimes you know in rare cases uh, sometimes if it's too much data it can crash so there could be some performance issues so if you have too many too much large data sets and you plan to do repetitive analysis so you want to do predictions over a long period of time it's always better to use the standalone versions and this is free these standalone tools um, are free for non-profit and academia and it's also available for industry at a nominal license fee you can email license at idb.org if you are interested to get a license for that so um, we will be providing um, uh, great support like um, uh, support for uh, uh, for the licensees and this is a sample command for a standalone version so at the top uh, so this is a um, <coughs> terminal um, command line interface or you can call it as that um, 
So at the top, you can see this is a sample command for class one prediction. So uh, this is the class one prediction script, predict binding.py, and I'm providing the method that I want. So this, here I'm choosing IDB recommender, and then uh, I'm providing the allele, the peptide length that I want, and the input file. And you get the prediction results like this. You can also export this to an out, uh, output file uh, to your machine. And this is for uh, class two, it's almost same. Um, I'm, pro I'm providing the method, uh, the allele, and here since the length, for class two, since the length is fixed at 15, you don't have to provide the length. And here you provide the um, input file. And um, very detailed instructions are available in the readme file, uh, which can be downloaded along with the tool package. And the next version is called API, Application Programming Interface or RESTful Interface. So uh, the details for this uh, API is available at this tab, Tools API tab at the main Tools page. And all, uh, there are many tools available. Um, and this API version is available for many tools. You can get all the sample commands and you know, all the parameters uh, there. And so what this does is that it basically it actually needs internet, but you don't have to depend on the web interface. You can use, you, what this does is it collects the parameters, you can submit the parameters, uh, and it sends the parameters to the server, which is located here at the institute. And it does the prediction here and sends the prediction results back to your machine. So you don't have to install the tools on your machine. You don't have to depend on the web interface and um, the, your sequences, the alleles and other parameters are sent to the server located here at the institute and the results are sent back to you. And this is freely available to all users and you don't have to update anything. So we update everything here. So you don't have to worry about that. It's automatically updated. So if it's the standalone tools, you will have to update it as we release new versions. And you know, this uh, API version is also useful if you want to make a pipeline uh, and you want to integrate the prediction into your pipeline. So this is a sample command for the API version. So you can use curl or any other program to submit the um, parameters. So um, similar to the standard, we have to provide the method, the sequences, the alleles, and the lengths. And this is the URL where you can um, uh, where you are sending these parameters. So all these URLs are provided here and sample commands are provided at this tab here. So till now we were going through the MSC binding prediction tools. Now we have, so those were, are the most popular or uh, most used tools uh, in, in this IDB analysis resource package. So that's why I was spending a lot of time on that. And that's one of the main reason is that that's one of the most limiting factor or most important step in uh, the antigen pathway or generating in generation of immune response. So binding of the MSC molecule and the peptides or the epitope is the most important and limiting factor, limiting step in case in the um, whole process of generating an immune response. So that's the most popular, uh, those tools are the most popular tools. So. Um, I took a little bit longer to explain that. So in the next um, uh, tools that I will be going through, I will not be giving all these details. I will just give you an overview of what we have available. And um, if you are interested to learn more, please get back to us. And also, as I mentioned, uh, you can also attend the workshop um, and you can also ask questions. Anyway, so the next set of tools is, um, uh, pro, uh, tools for predicting the processing. So, <clears throat> and um, so here, uh, so this is for uh, class one um, processing prediction. So in case of class one antigen processing pathway, once uh, the antigens are, um, this pathway deals the, uh, with antigens that are generated inside the cell. So for example, from viruses or things like that, or um, like, Mm, self peptides that are um, products of um, <coughs> cell destruction or cancer or like that. So once these antigens are broken down into smaller peptides um, by proteasome and transported to the endo, um, endoplasmic reticulum through tra TAP uh, system, TAP transport mechanism. So the first tool basically 
predicts um, the cleavage. So how these antigens are getting cleaved into peptides and what kind of peptides are generated from these antigens. And uh, which peptides get transported efficiently through, uh, through the TAP transport mechanism to the endoplasmic ER. And this also combines this uh, cleavage prediction with MSC1 binding prediction to generate an overall score for each peptide. So basically, if there's an if you have an antigen, it predicts what peptides will be processed and generated from this antigen, and um, which will uh, and predicts the binding affinity and combines both these predictions and gives an overall score. And the next um, tool also is basically does the same, but it uses a different architecture. It's um, based on neural network based prediction. And the next one also does uh, same. It predicts the naturally processed MSC peptide. So this um, based on a, is based on a different uh, architecture. So there are basically three different tools that are available to do the processing prediction. So I also want to warn you, or you know, just as a um, uh, warning, the performance for these processing prediction tools are not at as great it's not as good as the binding affinity prediction so what we recommend is you know just use the binding affinity prediction tools and if you still want to screen or filter further um, uh, from your selected peptides then you can go with uh, you can go for this processing prediction so first step always what we recommend is the binding affinity predictions that i explained before and the third set of tools is for immunogenicity prediction, T cell, so um, T cell immunogenicity prediction. So as I mentioned, um, the tools that I explained before, the first set of tools were based on MSC binding affinity data. So what peptides bind to MSC molecules and how strongly they bind. That's what uh, are predicted by those tools. But these tools predict how much immune response each peptide can generate. So the first difference is uh, what kind of data these tools are trained on. The first set of tools were trained on the MSC binding affinity measurements, but here these tools are trained on the immune response data that are coming from the T cells. So the first tool is for uh, predicting the immunogenicity of class one peptide MSC complex. And uh, this, this tool, CD4 T cell immunogenicity prediction is for class two, um, yeah. Uh, MSC mole um, peptide MSC complexes. So the first one is for class one, and this one is for class two. And this tool called deimmunization is for identifying the regions, the immunogenic regions in each antigen, and predicting how we can reduce the immunogenicity of those uh, antigens. So, for example, in case of immunotherapy or protein therapeutics, for example. Uh, proteins like um, erythropoietin or insulin or uh, other um, proteins which have to be in, in <coughs> provided to the patients. Sometimes these proteins can generate um, immune response um, in certain individuals. So we can predict which regions are uh, generating immune response in that particular person or um, <coughs> population based on their allele profile or their MSC allele. And we can predict, uh, we can suggest some amino acid mutations which can bring down the immunogenicity of those regions. So this, uh, this, uh, this is what this tool does. It predicts the immune, uh, re immunogenic regions and suggests some uh, mutations or changes in those antigens which can bring down the immune, uh, immunogenicity. So, and the last tool is for both B cell and T cell. It, is for predicting the structure of T cell and B cell receptors. Uh, so the, in case of T, um, T cell pathway, the MSC molecules present a present the epitope to the T cell receptors. And in case of B cell, the antibody presents the antibody epitope to the B cell receptors. So this tool is for predicting the structure of the T cell and B cell receptors. So this is an example of the predictor result. So at the bottom, you can see the structure of the T cell receptor with the epitope. So that's about the T cell tools. Now let's move on to the B cell tools. So in case of B cell, we have some tools for predicting the B cell epitope. And the second set is Lyra, uh, the one that I explained in the previous slide for predicting the B cell receptor structure. 
In case of B cell epitope prediction, there are some four different tools. The first one is prediction of linear epitopes from the protein sequence. So it's a collection of methods to predict linear B cell epitopes. So in case of um, <coughs> T cell, the epitopes are mostly linear or continuous epitopes. It's a stretch of amino acid sequence. But in case of B cell, the antibodies can recognize the structure of the antigen. So it can be discontinuous. So like um, different amino acids or different regions from different parts of the same antigen can be recognized at a time by the antibody. So it can be either linear or continuous or it can be discontinuous or non-linear epitopes. So the first method is for tool is for predicting the linear epitopes from the protein sequence. So for example, here you can provide either a cisprot ID or the linear protein sequence and you can choose which method you want and you can get the result like this. So for that particular sequence, these, um, so I have to choose a threshold here. So this is the recommended threshold. So these regions are found to be the um, uh, epitope regions or epitopes, linear epitopes in this particular antigen. So this is an example. In the next one, it's called discotope. It's prediction of epitopes from protein structure. Uh, it incorporates solvent accessible surface area to predict the uh, epitopes. So this is the result, a sample uh, result. You can see the epitope and the antigen structure in this 3D viewer. And the next one is called elipro. It's also almost same. Uh, it's epitope prediction based on the structural information. So this is an example here. You can see the predicted epitope in the antigen. And the last one is actually methods for modeling and docking of antibody and protein 3D structure. So this is not a tool, but this is just information on how you can do this. Uh, so it provides information on some outside the sources, uh, links to some tools where you can, which you can use to do the modeling and docking of antibody and protein 3D structures. So that's about, uh, that was a quick walkthrough on B cell tools. Now we have some analysis tools. So I will take you quickly through these tools as well. So the first one is population coverage. So for example, if you have a set of epitopes and you want to know how much population or how much fraction of a population can be covered with these set of epitopes. So you provide uh, the epitopes and the restricting alleles or the predicted alleles and you choose the uh, population you want. And we have information of allele, MSC allele frequency for each population. We collected that from allelefrequency.net database, and we will calculate how much coverage that you can get using these set of peptides in this particular population. So for example, I have selected Europe, and you can see here that if I use all these uh, set of peptides, I can get uh, almost 97 percentage of the population coverage. So this can be useful in case of you know, uh, designing a vaccine or things like that. And you can get an idea how much population can be covered with these peptides. The second one is epitope conservancy analysis. So what well, this is for, this is for um, calculating the degree of conservancy of each peptide in a set of proteins. So for example, I have a set of epitopes and I want to know uh, which sequences have these peptides. So I can select the identity threshold here. So if I want to know whether the exact peptides are present in these sequences or like if there are regions that are like 50% identical with these epitopes. So for example, if I'm selecting here exact peptides and submit, you can see that this peptide, the first peptide are present in five out of the exactly matching with five out of the 64 sequences in my set. So if you click on here, you can get the details. So these are the five sequences where this, where this peptide is uh, presenting exact 100% identity. And the next one is cluster analysis tool. Um, so we have a previous version, we have an updated version here, epitope cluster analysis. So what this tool does is if you have a set of large number of epitopes, it can cluster or group um, these peptides into similar peptides. So all the similar peptides get into one cluster. So um, the results for this example, like that, there were like 98 peptides and this uh, tool clustered these into four different clusters. So this cluster number, and these are, these are the sequences in the first cluster, and you can see an alignment, sequence alignment here. And this is the tabular view. You can also see a graphical um, visualization. So here you can see which uh, peptides are in each of these clusters. So this is dynamic. You can, if you uh, point 
your cursor uh, point your pointer to uh, each of these bubbles it can display the peptides here and the next one is called rate or restrictor analysis tool for epitopes so this is um, an automated method that can infer hla restriction for a set of given epitopes so for example if you have done an experiment with a set of peptides and you got immune response data from a set of subjects and you know the MSC allele profile of these subjects, you can submit that data and know what are the restricting alleles for each of the peptides in your data set. So this is uh, based on a statistical um, analysis. So you can see that this peptide, most probably this peptide is restricted by this allele. And this peptide has two restricting alleles, uh, BRB0101 and BRB0701. And these peptides have one allele each. So basically, once you submit this data, like allele profile data and the immune response data, and you select a threshold, um, you can see that there are like four uh, peptides have been found to be uh, having a certain allele restriction. And then there are five peptide allele restrictions. So you can see that here there are four peptides and altogether there are five peptide allele combinations for which we can determine the restricting allele. And the last one available is called Immunome Browser. This is a tool for you know, aggregating and visualizing the immune re reactivity data from a certain uh, antigen uh, based on the number of assays uh, or donors based on how much how many assays were positive and how many were negative so for example if you submit this data um, uh, so this is a set of peptides uh, and from uh, and the source antigen and you submit you will get something like this so this is also incorporated into the idb the, the database so if this is a sequence uh, so for example this is hemagglutinin sequence from influenza a virus you can see that at this particular region, uh, um, region there have been 144 positive uh, assays or positive responses and 21. So you can see that the, this region is very highly immunogenic. So this is um, uh, so the purpose of this tool is to visualize the immune um, you know dominance regions in the antigens. So that's about the different uh, tools uh, available like T-cell tools, B-cell tools, and analysis tools. And I also uh, took you through the different versions like API, standalone, and uh, the web versions. And now, as I mentioned before, um, you can download different tools, standalone tools or offline tools uh, or, and other data sets here. So there's a tab here um, tools.idb.org main uh, slash download and you can get all these um, downloadable items here so we have um, standalone tools for uh, b cell epitope predictor class one and class two epitope predictors elite pro epitope cluster analysis class one immunogenicity proteasomal cleavage prediction and many more we are still in the process of developing um, standalone tools for other tools for which we don't have standalone tools right now and the, the next tab is uh, data sets. So we also provide uh, the training data that we used for developing these tools and also other data sets, which can be mainly of interest for tool developers or you know, algorithm developers for developing or training new algorithms or testing or benchmarking new tools. Uh, so for each of these, data, most of these data sets uh, are associated with some references on um, already published uh, some uh, manuscripts so you can get all the details from those manuscripts so the first one is for msc class 1 binding prediction and the second one is for msc class 2 binding predictions so, uh, for example this is peptide binding predictions for hla dr dp and dq molecules so this data set actually contains 44000 measured affinities and covers 26 msc class 2 alleles so you can use this data set um, for training new methods or uh, benchmarking. And the um, next one, the third one is uh, some data related to B-cell epitope prediction. So with that, I think I did a quick walkthrough through all the tools and resources available here at the IDB analysis resource. 
And I want to thank uh, the team, acknowledge the team. So we have two teams basically. One is here at IDB uh, at uh, La Jolla Institute, and we have also a collaboration with the team at the Technical University of Denmark. So these are the persons behind uh, this IDB database and analysis resource. And before I conclude, I want to mention once again, if you are interested to know more about these tools and if you want to clear questions and talk to us in person, please come uh, to the annual workshop in October at La Jolla. And please email us at workshop at idb.org. Um, yeah, that's it, thank you. I think we have 10 minutes for any questions that you might have. Thank you very much, Dr. Paul. Uh, we do have a few questions. Um, with regards to your tool recommendations, uh, someone was wondering, how are these chosen? Is it, I'm gonna mispronounce this, heuristic, or is this done based on machine learning? It's based on machine learning. So uh, the methods, uh, we do benchmarking, um, like uh, performance analysis every now and then. And we determine which is the top uh, method for each of the alleles, and that's what we recommend. So the recommendations can change as we get more data and we do more benchmarking analysis. So that's why we are recommending uh, people to use choose the IDB recommended, unless you specifically want to use any other method. And with regard to your pipelines uh, that are running with API access, would you mind showing us the URL again for the documentation? I think we had a little trouble with the microphone when we were going over that section. For the API, you know, I'm oh, sorry. So all the details are here provided at this link. I hope you can see the web page. The page. Yes, we can, yes. So all them, so I don't want to give you a specific URL because sometimes we may be updating this. So always go to this page tools api and get the link from here so for example this is a sample link and here's the url see here so this is for class one and at the bottom you can see the same for class two so go to this page and get the link from here so sometimes in order to improve the performance um, you know or some other things we may update the link once in a while so it's better to get the latest you know from here from this page. Excellent. Well, I think that does it for our questions. Uh, thank you again, Dr. Paul, for joining us today. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we uh, sign off? Um, Hold on, I have one more question. Oh, we got one more. Yeah, so, um, um, if your, at least your download tools um, are actually available um, and, and registered with the SciCrunch tool registry, because, um, yeah, these are these are wonderful, and so being able to to track these over time with um, as they're used in papers is sort of the goal of that. These are great tools, um, and I don't see a lot of them registered. So um, that's uh, that's one a plug for um, making sure your tools are registered um, I'm, along with your I'm work. Sorry, register but also, um, I, I think it would truly help. Uh, uh, actually, you know, your users. So if somebody downloads. Um, a tool and wants to use it in their paper, they want to be able to refer to it, um, it would be nice to have a, a reference that's not just a URL. Yeah, and, um, so uh, I'm sorry, um, so are you asking for references for the tools or? Yes, have they all been published? Yeah, all these tools have been published. So um, in the beginning, I showed you for each tool, there's a tab called reference. So if you go to this reference tab, you can see all the references uh, that are related to, with the methods that are used in these tools. So for example, this is, <clears throat> these are the references for each of the method that have been used here. So for example, NetMSC fan here. And if you go to, uh, so you, we um, request everybody to cite these references so if you go to the tepi tool you can see the reference for tepi tool so this is the paper that uh, for this tool so for every tool uh, it has there is a reference okay yeah. never mind then they're okay. probably already in there okay thank you excellent well Thank you very, once again, Dr. Paul, for joining us today. I think that does it for our questions. Uh, if there's anything else you'd like to add, 
uh, before I end this webinar. We will be putting it on YouTube later today after I make some brief edits. Okay, I think that's it. And uh, yeah, if anybody, any user has any question, please reach out to us. We'll be happy to help. Great. Thank you so much again for joining us today. I hope you have an excellent weekend. And thank you to everyone who joined us live today. Yeah. Bye. All right. Bye-bye.